Good morning, good evening, traders, and welcome to the Pip Grabber Trading Show. This show is all about grabbing 20 pips out of the market. That is right, 20 pips out of the market. We did that yesterday, we did the day before. We've actually are flat on all positions. We have a successful, a successful strike rate, which means that we have gone ahead and all our trades that have been placed here in the show have paid off with some money. And we've had that 100% success rate over the whole of 2021. And we're going to do the same here in 2022. So traders, without further ado, let's go ahead and get the show on the road. I'll see you right after this. Hey traders and welcome back to the show. This is uh, the FX Big Dog. No, uh, people know me as the FX Big Dog on the online uh, chat. I uh, want to go ahead and uh, take a look and see what we got uh, going this morning as uh, we look for trading opportunities. Now remember traders, for those that are new to the show, the show is all about grabbing 20 pips out of the market and that's pretty much it. We do live trades here with live trading accounts. Everything you can see is going to be verified. How do we know that? Well, if you go down below in the chat, it will, sorry, in the description, You'll see that there is a, a Telegram link that'll link you to a Telegram channel that when we place trades here in the show, it goes straight into that Telegram channel, which means every trade that I place will be, uh, will be able to be tracked, verified, so that you know that this is not a BS show, but it is the Pip Grabber trading show. All right, another thing here as well. For those that are new, you don't know about the trade copier. We have a trade copy running on the same strategy that is placing a lot more trades, but it's doing it automatically for you. If you're interested in an, an, an automated system or an automated process of getting your, your account connected, you don't need VPS, you don't need charts, you don't need to be an analyst, you don't need to know anything about the market. All you need to do is connect your account to the trade copy and it trades for you. If you're interested in that, check out the description below. There are details down below that you can go ahead and get connected to the trade copy. Also, if you want to take a look at the results, also down below, you'll see a link there to the MyFX books that shows you the results that we're getting with the trade copier. Now, I'm going to go ahead and show you a quick example of exactly what that is right here, but you can go ahead and check out the link. So far this morning, as I go ahead and update right here, this is where we're at right here. You can see this month we're up 3.9%. Uh, this was updated about 55 minutes ago. We are 3.9% up for the month. This is the month, and then look over here in 2020, you see the results that we have here in 2020. Absolutely killer. We made 153% for the year in 2021. We made 18,500 pips in, in, in profits, and we generated, of course, like I said, around about 12.5% per month average over the last 12 months. Really good. And this month, like I said, we're at uh, almost 4% right here. So we uh, and we're just in the first week, which means that we're heading into a good month of January 2022. Great start for 2022. All right, traders. Now, let's talk about uh, trading opportunities. Now, yesterday we did go into uh, a few trades. Yesterday we actually had four trades placed. We carried over a trade on the Aussie CAD, but we placed uh, some new trades. We played. We placed a trade on the uh, the. Uh, US dollar CAD, we were selling US dollar CAD. Uh, we actually got into five positions, but eventually paid off. So we actually paid off this morning, uh, closed out with profit. We went into a trade with the uh, the New Zealand CAD. We were short New Zealand CAD. That paid off. We took a 20 per profit on that. We also went in on the uh, the Swiss, uh, the Swiss, uh, the CAD Swiss. And we were selling on the CAD Swiss, and that also took profit. And then, of course, the Aussie CAD also took profit as well. So we had four, the, four trades that were active yesterday and they all paid off. Once again, if you want to check and verify what I'm saying is true, check out the description. There's a Telegram link. You can go ahead and check out all of that details there. All right. Now, tra traders, if you're thinking that this is just a fake trading show, it absolutely isn't. Everything that we do here in the trading show is verified and you can follow it as we go along the way. It, and again, these are live trades being implemented. And every time we enter new trades or place new trades, you will know about that. So with that being done, let's take a look and see what we've got going this morning. As we've gone through quite a bit of data this week, 
on the US. There's a lot of data that came out this US. Let's take a look and see what data came out here in the US this week already. And let's go take a look and see here. So if you take a look over here, uh, this is the data coming out, or at least came out this week. We had uh, um, we had ISM, a manufacturing PMI that came out. That wasn't good. We had uh, uh, jobs opening right here for the U.S. as well. That's jobs, jobs opening. Uh, we had ADP numbers that came out yesterday. That showed uh, quite a big number compared to what we were thinking. Uh, they were thinking 405. It came out at 808 or 807K. And then we looked at uh, the FOMC meeting minutes. There were discussions yesterday with the feds. And uh, we saw the minutes that were revealed. And that we'll, we'll take a look and see what the US dollar did uh, according to the, 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 the news. And that was out at 2 o'clock. And then today, we've got at 10 o'clock, we've got ISM services PMI coming out also out here in the US. And we're not done. We're not done. You know, we're not done because we've got the non-farm payroll that, that's supposed to be the fundamental announcement of the month for the U.S. And we've got jobs coming out tomorrow for the, uh, the, for the U.S. average earnings, uh, non-farm payroll, unemployment rate. And then, of course, we've got some, something thrown in as well for the Canadians' job reports as well. So a lot of data still yet to be reported out to, uh, this week. So it's been a very, very, very exciting week for the U.S. dollar. Now, question here is, what do we do? All right, so this is where we're at right now. Let's take a look at the Aussie uh, Canadian dollar first. Now, if any of you have followed me in my trading rooms and my trading sessions, you will know that I love, absolutely love, looking at wave structure. Now, if you don't understand wave structure, something important, something really interesting is coming down the line. In fact, I will be doing a mastery course on on waves and, and, and making traders to uh, and helping traders to understand exactly what all right, exactly what these wave structures mean. All right, because traders, we have to. Whether you're a scalper, short-term trader, intraday trader, I'm going to throw everything out there. Position trader, swing trader, uh, just a trader that trades, <laughs> whatever. If you are whatever type of trader you are, what's important as a trader, you have to understand market swings. You have to, uh, you have to understand turning points in the market. Because if you don't understand what the market's going to do and where the turning point of the market is or where they project it to be, you will, not get, you will not be a successful trader. Because this is the reason. Even if you got a even if you enter on a trade in the wrong direction, let's say you do get something wrong and you get into a trade and you're in the wrong direction. What's going to save you is knowing where the next turning point is going to be so that if you have to re-enter and start adding to that position, then you at least know where to start adding. Because if you don't, uh, if you, sorry, if you add at the wrong places and the market continues to move against you, what will kick in, what will kick in is panic. And you'll start panicking at the time that you decide to get the heck out of Dodge because you've had enough. That's when the market will turn in your favor, but you're out of the market already. So you can see how it could be important for you to be able to control your emotions, add proper equity management to your positions, and, and at the, with the right timing so that you can go ahead and make sure that you get out of the straights. Now, a good example is, a great example is, is the Swiss JPY. I had a, we have another strategy that we're following. It's called Global Trend Breakout. And this, tra this strategy adds positions, and it goes ahead and picks trades uh, based on market conditions, all right? There's a different strategy around that. Now, what happens is we had the Swiss JPY completely move into an upside rally, a big, strong rally. I want to show you this because I'm going to go ahead and show you a chart right now, but I'll need you to understand this. Take a look over here. If I go to, uh, and let's go to the, the, the Swiss JPY right here, all right? Now, if I go to the Swiss JPY, this is what's happened right here. Traders got into a major panic about the Swiss JPY. Let me go to the daily time frame right here. All right. Now, take a look over this. Take a, take a look over here. If you look at this chart, what do you see? You see the market creating this wave one, two, three, four, 
and now five up here at the top. How do we know that's the fifth? Well, if you look over here, inside here, there's a wave one, two, three, four, and five. So we have a five-way structure here. We have the market coming here to the 1.27 right here. And so what do we expect the market to do when we get to the 1.27? Well, we're expecting this to be a fifth wave completion, and now we're looking for a corrective pattern. And the corrective pattern normally chases after the fourth wave low, which, by the way, is right about here. And so we had traders that were in multiple positions, and I am in too. I'm in multiple positions on the Swiss JPY. We're selling. The system had gone ahead and put us into sales, and we've been selling. And so, and, and so we've built up positions, and at this point in time, it's not time to panic and get the heck out of Dodge. It's time to celebrate and break out the champagne. Why? Because now we're going to start reaping the benefits of this downward correction move as it starts chasing after that 117.56 level. All right? Got it? All we're doing is looking for turning points in the market so that we can feel at peace with our positions and understand what the market's trying to do. The markets are going away. It doesn't matter what time frame you're in. It could be the daily, weekly, monthly, day, uh, the four hour, one hour, 15 minutes, five minutes. Markets are going to wave. We just have to understand how they're going to move and where the turning points are going to be. All right. Now, that was a little bonus thrown in there, just giving you a little bit of insight of what uh, wave structure looks like. But let's go ahead and get the show on the road because I think what you guys are here for is really to understand what is the next move that we're going to go ahead and trade this morning. Well, let's take a look at the, uh, the CAD, uh, Aussie CAD right here. Remember we spoke about, we just spoke about the wave structure on that uh, Swiss JPY, right? No different right here, all right? It is no different right here. If I go ahead and move this to a four hour, you can see a little bit more clearer. Look at the wave structure right here. We got wave one, two, three, four, and five. This is pretty much a sort of like a, 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 a demonstration or at least an example of what we're expecting on the Swiss JPY. Because we've gone ahead and completed that fifth wave right here, the 127. And what do we say when the market goes ahead and completes that fifth wave? We, we now expect the market to go ahead and drop back down to where? The fourth wave low. That's the target right there. And I feel like I'm screaming. I don't know why I'm screaming. All right. But this is the deal. All right. The market is going to come back to take out that fourth wave. Now, when it does, what do we think the market's going to do? When it takes out the fourth wave, now we're going to be starting a new structure, all right? A new wave structure. And so I should be thinking bullish at this point right here, all right? We're thinking bullish. Now, if I'm thinking bullish right here because we're at the support level, what do you think we're going to do on our, uh, what do you think we're going to do on our uh, uh, trade this morning? That's, the, traders, that's pretty much it. If you actually think about it right now, think about it, right? If the markets are turning at these turning points and we can identify these turning points, it's very easy for you to be able to go ahead and trade this. Now, there's great news. If you guys love manual trading, I'm going to be using a pip grabber trading tool to trade these trades. If you're interested in that, check out the description below. There's a link that you can go ahead and actually get the tool that I'm using and then do exactly what I'm doing, but do it yourself manually. So if you like manual trading, you want to follow along the way, check out below. It's called the Pip Grabber Trading Tool. Check it out below, and you can go ahead and get access to that and check this out. Because we're at support right here, it's a no-brainer. FX Big Dog, are you kidding me? No, not at all. It's a no-brainer. I'm going to go to the Aussie CAD right here, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm just change it to a one hour, and I'm going to go ahead and buy. There it is there. Now I'm in, long. I've used the pip grabber trading tool to get into the market. I'm in the trade, boom, done. You see traders, what we're trying to make sure about is that every process that we do is quick, simple, and easy. Back, back, back to back entry points. So we now entered in on that trade. I'm now in on the trade. I'm long on Aussie uh, CAD. Let's go take a look and see what else we've got here. Now I love New Zealand CAD too. I think New Zealand CAD should be heading up, uh, should be going bullish. Um, at some point, but let's take a look and see what's going on here. This is the uh, four hour. Now the four hour, we've got these, all these big swings going on right here, but the most important swing that I'm, I'm interested in is what's going on down below here. 
let's take a look here down below. Um, all right. Now, um, I don't know, Cameron, did you go ahead and post Robert's uh, uh, Robert's quote, uh, Robert's uh, uh, thing this year? Oh, there we go. Wow, nice analysis. I like that. Let's show everyone what's going on here. All right. All right. So let's go take a look right here. Um, Good. Uh, we got Yun says, Pip Grabber is working for me. Thank you for the alerts. You bet, my friend. You bet. So let's take a look here, right, right here. This is New Zealand CAD. All right, New Zealand CAD. And New Zealand CAD should follow the same, sort of the same movement as the, uh, the, the, the Aussie CAD, right? Now, the, the difference here is, again, look at the wave structure. Here we have the wave one. Wave two, market goes ahead and creates this wave three right here, pulls back up. We went and sold New Zealand CAD, all right? We sold New Zealand CAD. And so if we look over here, New Zealand CAD uh, is looking to rally back up. Now, we've really gone long on Aussie CAD, but I do see price possibly going down a little further down south. There is a little bit of movement. Now, because I want to do these uh, shows live, I'm going to go ahead and take a look here and see how much more can the market move down. All right. It can drop about another 19, 20. It may even go to 25 pips down below. So in order for me to not miss out on this, I want to show, I want to say this as well. Traders, we could also have what is called an irregular flat. What is an irregular flat? Well, it means price is going to come back above the previous low and then go ahead and take out the previous high. So I've got two options here, okay? All right, I've got two options. We can have price going down a little further and then rallying, or it can rally from this point onwards. Now, if it comes back down to the 1.27, I'm going to drop back. I'm going to probably be in the red on the, the first entry point. But when I pick up the second entry and then the market moves north, we are going to actually be able to make profit on the, the second entry as we get to the break even of the first entry. So it's still going to be okay. All right, we're still going to be okay. Now, let's take a look over here. Uh, the entry on this. The entry on this would be uh, would be the ideal entry would be around about 95.50. So, uh, sorry, 95.90, my bad. So, we're a 95.90 would be the best entry right here. That's about 15 pips away from where we're trading. So what I'm going to do on this, I'm going to take a quick look at U.S. oil. U.S. oil is showing indecision uh, on the four hour. This candle is just recently open right here. I believe it opened up at around about uh, nine o'clock. Yep. So it's just open right here. So we don't have a lot of data on the four hours. So when I look at this, it's like, uh, you know, I can't really make a quick decision. This is an hourly. Uh, we've got about for 23 minutes left before this hourly candle closes out. It's also showing a little indecision. So if US oil dips down south, all right, if it's going to drop, then, uh, and do we expect US oil to drop? Now let's take a look at the long-term outlook on this. Well, U.S. oil created this wave one, two, three. And what's interesting, traders, about this wave uh, four right here is that it never got taken out. You see, uh, if I look over here, take a look right here. We haven't got to 88 yet. All right, we didn't get you $88 a barrel yet. All right, and then market came back inside the AB boundary, all right, the, the, the previous high. And so we were looking for price to take out this low right here around about 61. Now, the, the market can retrace in two patterns, irregular flat or a running flat. Right now, it's looking like more of a running flat because it's gone ahead and traded back above this previous high right here. So this area right here is critical. 76.41. I would like to see price trading back below that. All right, let's go here. Do we have any divergence here? Nope, we don't have divergence. So I would like to see uh, some indecision on this. You know, if I see any indecision right here on a downside bearish candle, uh, I would be expecting that price is going to chase after that $61 barrel. And once we take out 61, then we'll be chasing after 88. But let's say I'm wrong. 
All right, let's say I'm wrong, which is, by the way, not, uh, uh, not something that could not happen. But let's say I'm wrong, right? And if I'm wrong on this and price goes up and we do hit that 1.618 right here and, and we see it irregular uh, or running flat uh, for, uh, on this chart, then if we go to $88, then that means that we will still see the market come back down to 62. The market will come back down to retest this low. So if 88 hits, we will see a downside move in oil, all right? But once we get that back down to the 62 or 61, then it's it's over Johnny for the oil. It's oil's going to rally. And it's going to rally strong and it's going to get up to $100 a barrel. So watch out for that price. Uh, but yes, for right now, I think we're going to be wedged up. But I'd like to see if we get some bearishness, bearishness here on the, on, the, on the oil so that we can see price drop back down to $61 a barrel. But right now, clearly the daily's not giving us a good sign. The four hour is not really giving us a good sign either. Uh, let's go ahead and see if we can pick up something else here for you. So let me jump in. It looks like my charts are freezing up on me a little bit. Too much action this morning. So let's go back to uh, New Zealand. So this is uh, uh, the New Zealand CAD right here. This is the four hour time frame. I'm going to follow suit just like I did with the Aussie. I'm going to go ahead and buy a New Zealand CAD right here. All right. So I'm long Aussie CAD, I'm long New Zealand CAD. Let's go take a look at uh, uh, CAD Swiss. Uh, well, I actually uh, wanted to go long on CAD Swiss here, but I think I'm too late on this one. And it's okay to be too late. Well, let's take a look right here. All right, so if we look at the, uh, the daily time frame, if we go ahead and check out the daily, we can see that the market's range bound on the daily. We, we, uh, we came off the bottom right here, which means that long term, we're looking for CAD Swiss to actually go ahead and chase after this high up here at the top. <clears throat> so if that's the case, if we're looking for the CAD, uh, the, the CAD Swiss to go long, then uh, we should be looking for dips and looking for uh, upward swings and trading those dips back up north, right? Well, Let's take a look here. I think if we look at this, we've got a wave one. We actually have not hit the wave three target yet. So then I'm going to do this. I'm going to look inside here. This is wave one. This is wave three. And this is inside swings. Let's go. Ahead. I'm going to mark it off as inside swings so we can see what it's at. Uh, let's do this. One, two, three. So this is four right here. Now we're looking for five up here at the top. And five will be all the way up here. So this is where we're looking for five to go to. Now, uh, if I look over here, did price come back to retest this low right here? No, it did not. So it did turn around. Did it test that 1.618 over here? Yes, it did. Okay, let's go back over here. So let me go down, down to the four hour. So on the four hour, I'm going to look at the swings going down. I've got your wave one, two, three, four. We haven't got to the wave five, but it came back inside the boundary, right? You see it got back above that low right here. So which means that we could see, even if it's a short term, wave one, two, we're looking for price to go up to this value right here, and that's priced at around about 0 0.7248. Now, um, let me see here. I'm going to go down to the 15 minute time frame. I'm thinking bullish on this, but I want to go ahead and take a look at the 15 and see if, I've got, if I'm going to get too late on this one. Yeah, I'm, I'm not... Uh, Nope. I'm going to stand aside on the CAD Swiss right here. Uh, I try to break it down as much as I possibly can to see if I can get in on a, on a turning point. But if the market is at the support right here, I would look to go ahead and buy in. But because it's not there, I'm going to stand aside on the Swiss. Okay, the CAD Swiss. Let's go to the Euro. Uh, let's go take a look at the Euro. 
Remember we spoke about it yesterday and said the euro is in this range. It's not at support. It's not at resistance. So I'm pretty much going to stand aside on the euro as well. So euro, US dollar, I'm going to stand aside the euro, US dollar. Don't like where it's sitting at right now. Let's go to the last currency pair right here. It's a US dollar CAD. Uh, US dollar CAD right here. We've got this downward swing. we uh, got a second swing right here. So we're in a fourth wave correction. We started looking at our swings from the top here. There was our first wave going down from there to there. Then we had our third wave hit down here. We pull back up. We hit resistance right here. Now we're looking for the US dollar cat to sell off. Now it's already started its turning point here on the four hour, but let me go to the 15. Ah, smack. All right, so the, we've really had a big move to the downside. So keep in mind, traders, that I am looking to go bearish on the US dollar cat. But right now, if I go ahead and put my swings in here, here's the first swing. You can see right here, we're in the middle of the swing. We're right in the middle of the swing. We haven't hit our target down here. We're in the middle of the swing, which means that traders that the market can move up and down. I'm just not going to go ahead and trade this one as well. See, traders, you know, sometimes we have to be a little bit more disciplined in our trading. Uh, sometimes when we look at the markets as we're looking at right here, we don't have the setups that we're looking for. And if the market's at, not at the support, not at the resistance, then we're simply going to go ahead and stand aside. Now, if you are, uh, if you like the strategies, you like the things that we're doing inside the, this trading show, then I would like to go ahead and uh, ask if you want to do me a huge favor. Go ahead and smash the like button right now. Smash the like button. And also, while you're down there, subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed already. We'd like to continue to continue these shows, but the only way we're going to do it is with your support. So smash the like button. Smash the like button three times if you have to. No, it can only be smashed once. I'm only kidding. But go ahead and smash the like button. Also, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And if you like these trades and you want more of these trades, then what you might want to do is subscribe to the actual trade copier, and that way you can get a lot more trades implemented while you are sleeping because it does everything for you automatically all right go ahead and check out the description below all the details are there that you can go ahead and connect to everything that we do here in the trading show and more check out the description below and traders i want to go ahead and thank you for your time have a great weekend and we'll see everyone back again uh, on tuesday at 9 50 as we continue these shows this month this is fx big dog signing off